Hello, Stronghold. Welcome to Aether Creates a brand new tile set for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. So this is a random side project that I've been working on, which um, weirdly enough, pretty much touches every brand new modern, like state of the art technology that is available to the public, right? In terms of machine learning and AI, like regardless of the outcome of like the, the resulting tile set, Right, I think it's just sort of interesting to talk about. Maybe it'll give you a better understanding of like modern machine learning and AI projects as well as, you know, like the actual application of them, right? So I'm not like a machine learning scientist or like a deep learning scientist or statistician or anything like that, right? Like I, I'm just like purely a hobbyist, but, um, you know, I've always been fascinated by these sorts of models and I've sort of been following them for pretty much like the last decade, right? So, you know, I, I've been there for like the original StyleGAN and um, AlexNet and reading all those papers and then basically just following along as um, momentum just uh, increased like faster and faster until now it almost seems like every week there's like a brand new technology, right, for us to um, incorporate into our daily lives. But yeah, um, so this picture that you're seeing now is sort of like a high level overview of like what this project entails, right? So um, I'm, I'm going to get into like the various individual parts, but I'd like to talk about um, each each part piece by piece first, right? To just give you like a general high level overview. Okay, so um, to just uh, restate, right? Like our goal is to create a tile set for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, right? So if you think about that, like, what does it entail, right? If we look at the uh, bottom picture down here, right, we see trees, we see um, tiles, right? Like we see little rocks and like bushes and plants and flowers and things like that. So the idea is to make it so that every single piece of art in the game is unique and um, is unique for every single item and monster and terrain in the game, right? So um, to give you a rough estimate of like how many of each there are, so in Cataclysm, there are around 8,500 items, right? So there's just like an absolutely massive list. If you've ever looked into like the wish function, right? Like that's what this is. And then, yeah, the, it's uh, 8,500 lines long. Then there's like the monster spawning list, which, um, in this case is 8,600 or rather 860, right? So that's how many monsters there are. So all of those need unique art, right? So the items and the monsters combined are sort of like a special case, right? Where if you think about it, um, like imagine seeing an item on the ground in the game, but that item has a background, right? Like basically the entire tile would be just like filled out. It would just look like a, like a flat, um square on the ground right which would look super weird which is why both the items and monsters um essentially have like a unique model that's unique to them right where essentially we want to strip out the background from the image right so it's like we have a pixel art model right like something that can generate pixel art Right, and then we want to make sure that the pixel art that's generated is generated w with a uh, without a background, essentially, right? Um, so yeah, we have items, we have the monsters, um, and then we have something that can generate pixel art, right? So the way we get this is um, essentially there's something called stable diffusion, right? Which is like an open source, uh, less open source now, right? Like now that they have like billions of dollars in. Uh, investment funding, but it's essentially like a giant published model of weights, right? That uh, you can run on a consumer GPU, right? Which basically allows you to generate random pieces of art. Um, then, right, like I take that base model, right? And then I like fine tune it. So it's this is called fine tuning, where like you feed it like very, very particular examples of the art you wanted to sort of learn the style of, right? So um, just like finding examples of pixel art on the internet, just like online. So this is how like Stable Diffusion was uh, trained as well. It's basically like an entire scrape of the internet, pretty much, 
right? So it's like literally like millions, if not billions of images, right? And then um, it's sort of like forced to learn a representation of all of them, right? And then we're like getting rid of pretty much all of that, right? By like, at least in the style compartment, by like forcing it to learn this unique style of like our pixel art, right? So then we have a model that knows a lot about like everything on the internet, and has like a pixel art style, right? But then it's like, how do we actually get it to uh, generate anything useful, right? It's like, yes, we could potentially like type in for like every single item, like here's what we want, right? Like, and then, then for every single monster, here's what we want. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm not, I'm not gonna just sit there and do this like 10,000 times, right? And just like sort of like, just wait for like my graphics card to like generate right like each generation probably takes like 15 seconds right and then uh take a look at the output and then try again etc cetera, etc cetera. um so yeah there's got to be a better way and luckily there is right so um image generation is not the only like generative model that's been released to the public right i'm sure you've heard of chat GPT as well. If not, I literally have like videos on my channel where I, I, I play around with it, but basically, right? Like, um, large language models are essentially like, um, a text predictor on steroids, right? So essentially all it's doing is predicting the next word more accurately, the next token just over and over and over again. But it's been trained on so many like millions of books and like millions of articles and everything that it like fully learned um the full extent of like human grammar like human punctuation human intonation just like basically everything that it was exposed to on the internet right it sort of like accumulated into like one gigantic database of knowledge that it can then use right which is perfect for us because basically what we need right is uh we have like the items we have the monsters right but the, it's like how do we feed um a, the, a visual description of you know like the items and monsters into our model to actually generate it it's like yeah we could you know pass in the name sort of but it's like the name might not be descriptive enough right and then if we pass in like the long description right like the description is way too long it could be like multiple sentences and stable diffusion really works best if you like provide it like a sentence maximum or something along those lines, right? So we need like a sweet spot in between the two, like something longer than the name and something shorter than the description. So luckily that's where the language model comes in. Uh, luckily we don't have to fine tune this one, right? Because we're essentially fine tuning it on the, um, on the examples, right? And then we take that, um, output that the model generates and then we can finally combine that with the fine-tuned pixel art model in order to get it to generate um exactly like the items that we want right okay so that's one path already this is like an uh, incredible amount of work right like one just like fine-tuning a stable diffusion model is just like sort of well it's not crazy but just to like give you an overview of like how long each step takes right like finding examples of pixel art on the internet right like i ended up finding you know like a couple thousand examples right which took i don't know like a day of like a bunch of coding and dinking around right and then um i just had to like write a whole bunch of like image processing algorithms that like you know like resize and center the images and things like that right especially like dealing with aspect ratios because stable diffusion is always 512 by 512 right then we feed that into the algorithm so this was a day right like fine-tuning the algorithm was like 18 hours of just like straight gpu usage um then we have like this large language model right so um we do that and then to give you an example each generation of just like the sentence takes around like 10 ish seconds right so already like 10,000 items times 10 seconds right a hundred thousand seconds is basically a day um so th that's how long that takes and then uh generating the uh the item or the monster right um this 
takes maybe 15 seconds, right? Like per thing. And then like stripping the background will be like an extra 10 seconds on top of that. So that's like just two days of straight processing power that this is going to take. Um, right. So then that's like this top part done, right? And then like the only thing that we have left over, right? Like in terms of the tile set that I know of, um, or that I guess I'll be focusing on is like there's items, there's monsters, and then there's the terrain, right? I think the only other thing are like effects, right? Like sparks and like bullets and things like that. But I think all of that is like fairly minor. So it might not make sense to worry about it. And I probably won't because already like this project is like so complicated, right? So yeah, uh, right, like in order to generate the terrain, right? Like, so this has like entirely different requirements of like the pixel art model, right? Like if you think about it, right? Like the pixel art model, you sort of want it to stand out, to look nice on its own, right? Like to be visually appealing and catchy and things like that. But like with terrain, you almost want the opposite, right? Like if all of the terrain was just as catchy as like all the items and the monsters, right? It would just be like, horrible to look at right it would just be like way too busy and cluttered and things like that um so really what i'm thinking is i will need like an entirely new data set um for just like the terrain itself right and then like this will also require like a whole bunch of processing like if you imagine like this tile set right i'd have to like break this up into like columns and rows and then like resize all the images and then like train the model and like yeah, it's just like a whole bunch of extra work. Not to mention, like, I'm not even really sure, like, where to find tile sets, right? Like, pixel art, it's just, like, very easy because you could just sort of throw whatever, right? Like, there are just, like, a, a lot of, like, big places that aggregate pixel art. But, like, specifically tile sets, that seems much harder. But anyway, right, like, once that's done, so this will probably take, like, honestly, like, three days or something like that, right? like one day for training again, just as long as like the pixel art model, right? Um, because we'll probably just end up training them for the same duration of time. But yeah, the, the bigger part will be to like, to like find the different sources of um, tile set information. If you happen to know, right? Like just like randomly, like where there's a ton of like tile set information, I'd love to know, but yeah. Um, and yeah, we could potentially use the Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tiles as well. So uh, once we've had the model trained, right, like we're going to do the exact same thing with like the, the that we did with the items and monsters, right? We pass in the name, we pass in the description of the terrain, right? If you examine like grass, it tells you it's like a nice field of grass or whatever, right? Um, so then we like generate the tiles using the new model. So then we have the monsters, the items, the tiles, right? And then we combine that all together. And then this is probably going to be like another day of like thinking around and like making sure all the formats are correct for like the game to actually like read in the data and things like that. And then like we'll finally have um, what may or may not be like a cool uh, tile set, right? So yeah, um, that's like the overall plan, right? There you go. Um, Having said that, like, I do have extra footage, right? Like, for me, actually, like, doing these things and, like, gener generating things and things like that. So stay tuned for that, so, and we'll get into it. All right, let's 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 do it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the different parts. The first part is actually extracting the data out of uh, Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Right, if we don't know what items we're actually supposed to be generating the art for, then the rest of the process is useless, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Um, luckily for us, there is a, a debug menu, and within the debug menu, we can go ahead and spawn an item, right? Which means that we can essentially have a list of every single item in the game, right? So. Because Cataclysm is open source, I can modify the source code. And what I did was I um, made it so that whenever this menu was opened, it would just dump every single item in the game into like one gigantic massive debug log. So if we go ahead and take a look at it, right, you can see it's uh, quite gigantic, 39,000 lines. 
or 390,000 lines rather. Um, so yeah, there, there's just like a bunch of random like color codes in here, right? But you can sort of see the, that like this is where it like roughly begins. Like this is one item, right? Like one, one piece of debug information, right? So here's like the item ID, right? And then like the actual name, leggings too small. I, I really don't know why there's like Cataclysm has like the too small, um, you know, armor and just like so much of it. It just seems kind of silly, right? But then here's like the entire dump of information, right? Like material, volume, category, the description, um, then like the covers, the protection, right? Um, and then I, I'm pretty sure this giant blob is supposed to be like um, rendering out the character, right? Like just drawing how the armor looks like and what it covers on the character. And then here, like repair with, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then we also have the barter value as well, right? So then that was like a single item, right? <laughs> and then, um, you know, like we have um, 8,500 other items like that. So as fu much fun as it seems, right, to um, just go through by hand and pick out the details, I just wrote like a tiny little bit of code. It's like super, super sloppy to just like roughly parse out the list. That's why it's like only 62 lines long, right? But if you were curious um, about like how I actually got all of the items, that's essentially how I did. Um, I did consider like modifying item the C++ to like, you know, try to try to make it more convenient for myself. But honestly, this gave me such a headache looking at this code. And there's just like a bunch of like parts like shifting around, push back, back and place back. Like I, I just got so confused looking at this that I just like, yeah, just did my like stupid dump of like just the ID, <laughs> right? The name. And then just like the whole giant blob of info that gets rendered out whenever you like examine an, an item, right? So yeah, that's a wish dot C++ that I modified, right? So what do we do once we have our giant list? Here we can see the large language model in action. Let me go ahead and pull it up. Yep, over here. Um, so this is a front end for the large language model, right? Um, so here we have our prompt. And basically, um, a large language model without a lot of um, reinforcement learning, right? Like, which is the reason why ChatGPT is so good is because they had people go in and like mark responses as useful versus non-useful. But uh, yeah, this model doesn't have that, right? So you basically have to provide a number of examples, which is called a few shot learning right, in order to try to get it to do what we want. So specifically, what we want it to do here is, right, um, so we give it the name of a of a, a Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead item, right, so you can can a home. And then the description, this entry-level guide to home canning talks about the importance of acidity and food cotton contents and preservation and how to avoid contaminants in your canning batches, right? And then we give a visual response, right, of a book depicting home canning techniques on the cover, right? So this is what I wrote based off the name of the description, right? So then we have, um, you know, I basically picked a couple of random ones, you know, mild steel chain mail coif. And then for the visual, I just said a small chain mail coif. And then for the wild sarsaparilla root, I just put gnarled woody brown sarsaparilla root, right? So then, right, like now that we've uh, sort of primed the AI with a number of examples, we use the same format, right? Like name, description, and then in this case, whistle multi-tool, right? And then the description is a cheap gadget combining a whistle with thermometer, magnifying glass, and compass. And that's actually like, I don't know, that sounds like a super hard thing to visualize, but let's see what the uh, AI generates. So this is running on my local GPU and aha. So it, it it describes it as a multi-tool with a whistle attached. I mean, you know, it's like fair enough, right? Like it's mis missing some um, details, but um, it sort of gets the idea across, right? So um, this is like the front end, right? Like a way for us to interact with the model using a UI, right? But like, 
you know, I have 8,000 items, right? Like in Cataclysm. So I'm not just going to go through and like manually like paste in this format, right? And then like copy the output and whatever, right? That's just like way too much work. So I wrote like a program, right? So basically the first thing I did was I dumped all of the items in Cataclysm, right? So this is like 8,500 items or something like that. Um, and then I, I'm like making the same prompt here, right? So you can can a home, blah, 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 right? So we're priming the AI here. And then um, I also use like the item.name and then item.description text, right? So then we're basically for every item, right? Like we're sending the name and the description. And then we're basically doing all this random stuff to uh, get the response. So if we run this, right? So um, as you saw, it takes a little while to generate the response. So it might take a little bit, but let's see. So, okay, so we have AID biomagnet. And then the response is a data card with a picture of a robot holding up a data card. Okay, <laughs> and then bone broth, the description is bone broth. Spear gun, a spear gun with a long shaft and a sharp point. Tail hook stock, a black plastic tail hook stock. Yeah, so I don't know, I mean, I don't know like how good the, these descriptions are, you know, it's gotta be said. Um, what's crazy is this, this is like the, um, I think like over 10 billion parameters, right? So it's like, if we take a look at our, our GPU memory, right? It's like, it's like 20, it's like 80% in use. So I can't really go any bigger than this. This is like as good as we're gonna get. A manual launcher, a green book with a picture of a soldier holding a grenade launcher. I mean, I think that was pretty good, right? A clear plastic bottle with a black cap containing a white filter cartridge, a huge Kevlar vest, XL Kevlar. Yeah, so I, I mean like some of these are pretty good, right? So yeah, the, the like, you know, you can imagine like this just sort of like chugging away and then over the course of a day, it will just generate like a visual description of every single item, right? So then um, we can then move on to the next step. Okay, and now that we have our strings, right, that were generated here, um, we can go ahead and start feeding them into the newly trade pixel art model. Right, so um, if you guys were not aware, I went ahead and trained like a pixel art model based off of um, stable diffusion, right? So it's essentially fine tuning um, using something called stable tuner. But yeah, um, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like, right? So we're making sure it's pixel art, right? So here we can see a clay brick with a rough surface, right? So we Im input that here. And I'm thinking of adding like lying on the ground, right? So then that way it doesn't generate like a brick wall or something like that. It just generates like a clay brick, right? So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. There you go. I would, I would call that a single clay brick with a rough surface lying on the ground. That's pretty good. Um, we did specifically specify, right, like pale golden rod, sandy brown, red, etc. cetera. Um, I'm curious to see what it would give us if we did like remove the colors, right? So we just kept the many colors part. I, I haven't played around with this at all, really. Aha, so that's what it looks like. Interesting. Hmm. I'm not really sure what to do about the palette. Like one thing I was thinking of was, um, you know, like potentially we could make the color different depending on either one, the category, right? Like things have different categories, like guns are in the guns category, seeds are in the seeds category, books are in the books category, et cetera, right? And then I think like, I don't know what a clay brick would be, maybe under like construction materials or something or like other or something like that. Right, so depending on the type, right, like we generate a palette that way. Alternatively, we could like make it based off the barter price or something, right? So it's like if it has a low barter price, right, it's got like subdued um, values, right? And then if it has a um, high price, right, it's like very vibrant colors. Like, for example, if this brick was worth like, I don't know, like a hundred barter value, right? Then we would make it like super vibrant. 
right? Like green, blue, red. That that should look pretty crazy. Let's see what that looks like. It's pretty vibrant, I'd say. Um, you know, I guess one issue we're immediately seeing is like if we were to use this as the actual icon in game, right? It will look terrible because there's no transparency, right? It's like all of it is like filled with stuff, right? So um simple background or something. Right? Like obviously I'm gonna need to like engineer it. Like this sort of like prompt engineering is like a weird way of like doing wishy-washy programming with like a machine learning model, right? So you just sort of have to like tinker with it. Oh that that worked pretty well it seems. Hmm. And we have our weird brick. Let, let's generate another one. Um, a tourmaline silver bracelet. A silver bracelet with large tourmaline stone. Okay. So yeah, a single. And then we insert our thing here. A single s silver bracelet with a large tourmaline stone lying on the ground. Simple background. Okay, let's see what we get. Uh -huh. Well, th this time the background was very much not so cool. What if we just do like detailed background as a negative prompt? There we go. Interesting. Let's let's play around with this like a tiny bit more. So if there's, I think there's like extras, right? Um, so if we send to image to image. Tiling, tiling is interesting. Like putting, turning on tiling would make it so that it's a seamless tiling, which I think would look much better. Okay. Um, install from URL. I don't know. I'm just doing, I'm just winging this right now. This looks promising. Maybe. <laughs> it, it seems very simple. Rem, rem booger. Okay. Yeah. Remove background, I guess. Yeah. The, the examples seem pretty good. Um, hopefully this does not randomly hack my computer. Oh, here it is. Under extra, there's now a remove background. Okay, this is a uh, seemingly promising. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, <laughs> is it doing it? Oh, aha! Is this with the background removed? I mean, you know, honestly, it's like. It's not terrible, right? Like for like zero zero work on my part, right? I mean, I would say that's like honestly pretty good art. Like, right? It's like, yeah, the the background might not be like entirely removed, but that's that's pretty solid, right? So, um, yeah, you 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 sort of get the sense of the pipeline, right? So we generate a prompt, we insert the prompt into here to generate this image. The background is stripped, and then it's exported, right? Because like we uh, generated the prompt from the description, every single item is mapped back to the original cataclysm item, right? And then that way, right? Like once we do th like this entire process for all 8,500 um, items, right? Then we have um, all of the items done, right? And then we can import them into the game as a tile set.